To start with, I have a skillet here, an aluminum skillet, and I also have some, um, some clarified butter that I'm going to put in it. And I'm going to heat that butter right up. At home, you can use um, vegetable oil. Make sure to get away from the fat, canola oil, something like that. But keep in mind, the less butter you use, the less browning is going to occur on the fish itself. Now, walleye, like many other things, if you're going to prepare it and put it on a dish, you want to add some uh, vegetables and starch to it as well. And today I've prepared some broccoli that we're going to put into a boiling water here. There we see the boiling water. We're going to drop the broccoli right in. And then I'm going to do carrot taglatelli, which is ribbon carrot. And the ribbon carrot is going to be simply done with a peeler. Okay, and we'll peel the carrot right into the water. And that's going to give us a nice flat base noodle and some good color to go with our walleye. A walleye is a white fish and it's not going to have a lot of color once it gets on the plate other than the browning. So we want to make sure that we have some different uh, accompaniments on the plate to make it look really nice. Okay, so there's my carrot noodles. I've got my pan here and I'm going to put it right over here. That's going to steep together right there. Now the parts that we're going to use au natural are going to be the tail parts. And we see them right here. And we're going to line them right up. A lot of times the tail is the part that cooks most rapidly because there's less dense here. Here we see the loins that we are going to cook with the buttermilk in a moment. But we have the tail pieces here and we're ready to go. Now, this is going to cook very readily. We want to um, season our fillets. We'll season the fillet with a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, since the walleye is uh, lacking in color, we're going to want to use some black pepper this time as opposed to some white pepper. These cook very rapidly, very rapidly. So here we see some uh, black pepper on there. Don't want to over season because the walleye is definitely a delicate fish that has a delicate flavor. and We don't want a lot of uh, seasoning on there so you don't want to over season. We see the butter melted in the skillet. Okay, now we're going to lay our fillet tail pieces right in on top. Okay, we're putting them right in there. Remember, fish cooks very rapidly, very rapidly. So the fish is always the last thing that's going to go on the plate. Okay, you want to put the fish skin side up. Okay, the skin sides up. The part that goes, comes right off the bone is what you want to do skin side down because that's going to give you a better presentation of the fish when it's done. Now we're going to go back over to the heat and while that is browning up on one side, I'm going to start assembling the plate. Okay, my plate's right here. Okay, and I'm going to take it, we'll put it right here. And I have uh, prepared some rice. So we've got the rice right here. I'm going to add a little bit of chive in to my rice to give it a little color. We'll mix that up a little bit, give us a little color. We'll put our rice right in here, like so, right into a timbali. Then we're set, ready to go to unmold. We'll unmold right like so. Now we're ready to look at our fish. Now we can see here that the fish is ready to turn by the way the browning is happening around the side of the fish. Very nice little pieces are going to cook very rapidly, okay? They're going to come right off there. And we've got some good browning. We see the seasoning of the black pepper and the salt. It's all set and ready to go, okay? I don't even need to put it back on the heat at this point in time. I'm not going to put it back on the heat because you don't want to overcook the fish. Now, I'm ready to work my plate a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put on some of my carrot tagliatelle that I had cooked up before. And we're going to put it right here in the middle. We'll put a little bit of uh, broccoli on there to give us a little bit of color to accent our walleye. And it's going to look great. The broccoli coming from a uh, local farm as well as the carrots. And we're looking at far local farm to table. So here we look at our walleye. And in all actuality, this walleye is fully cooked. It's ready to serve. We want to add a little bit more flavor, some lemon juice to it and we're going to put it back on the heat, get a little more uh, heat going on that. And now we're going to take our knife, go ahead and cut our lemon in half. 
all right? And we see our plates right here, and we can just squeeze the lemon right in on top of the walleye. All right, once the walleye is finished like so, now we are ready to go ahead and put it onto the plate. And we're gonna put it right like so on each side. We got five pieces here, so that gives us a nice odd number. We see that it's flaky, we see it's coming apart. That's a good indication that the fish is finished. Oh, beautiful, tender, falling right off, falling right apart. Okay, now I have the butter. If you're a dietary concern and you want less fat in your, in your diet, you don't want to pour the butter on top. But the butter is very flavorful. It's got some lemon in it. And we can pour a little bit right there, Bermonier, and ready to go. While I pipe with some brown butter. This is something that you'd buy in a restaurant. A uh, very delicate fish, takes a lot of care, cooks very rapidly, so you have to be on the ball and ready to do it. Should be delicious. Now we're ready to uh, introduce gluten into the breading procedure of the walleye. Um, first off, we've got some buttermilk here that we're gonna use, and obviously note that well, in the first dish, we used the tail pieces, which were very thin and not very dense. Here, we're gonna use the loin, which comes from the head of the fish, and it's much thicker. So it's quite possible that we may need to put this in the oven a little bit to finish it off when we cook. But always keep in mind, fish cooks very rapidly and it's easy to overcook. Okay, right off the bat, I'm gonna introduce this protein into some acid of the buttermilk here and the buttermilk's going to react with the fish and give it a little bit of juiciness and tenderness and break down those proteins just a little bit. Um, while many game animals use soak in milk over a period of time to re uh, enhance the flavor and break down the proteins, fish is something that's uh, dipped very briefly and then goes into seasoned flour. And the seasoned flour, as we all know, is where your gluten comes from. Okay, now I'm going to roll it in the seasoned flour we see that the flour has um, grabbed on to the fish and it's got a nice breading on the outside. If we wanted the breading to be even crispier, we'd go ahead and repeat the pre uh, procedure by putting it back into, the, um, back into the buttermilk and then back into the flour and you'd have a thicker breading on there. But that is gonna increase your fat content of the dish. Okay, here we go. Now we've got my uh, skillet right here with my, uh, my butter. And I'm gonna put the fillets right in there. The skillet's a little chilly. We see a little bit of bubbling action happening there as that goes, and it's right on there, and we're gonna put it on the heat. So my walleye's gonna start cooking when it's in the skillet. The proteins are gonna tighten up, and it's gonna be very good. We see it right over here. While that's occurring, we're gonna go ahead and do our plating exercise that we did with the first dish. We're gonna uh, do something similar. Here we have some, a little bit of rice that we've cut up some uh, chives for to give the rice a little bit of color. We're gonna take our rice, we're gonna scoop it into our, uh, our little Chinese teacup, perfect size for timbali, and we'll put it right in the middle, and we're gonna work the center of the plate with this walleye. Okay, now I'm ready to go and look at my vegetables that I did before. And we have three pieces of uh, walleye loin that's gonna go on this, so we're gonna work the plate when thirds. So we got a third here, we got a third there, and we have a third here. And the carrot ribbons can go right around the timbali like so. All right, now we're looking at our walleye. We've got a nice thing going here. We wanna break it apart a little bit. Um, at this point in time, we're ready to go ahead and give it a little peek. Give it a little peek and oh, we have a nice golden brown there. A nice golden brown from that butter and that buttermilk and the flour gave you a nice golden brown. We note that that only took, oh, not even a minute or so. If I were working professionally in a restaurant, I would set this fish aside and let the uh, radiant heat go ahead and finish it off. It wouldn't take but maybe two or three minutes for the fish to cook entirely through. Uh, for the purposes of the show right now though, we're gonna throw it in the oven and we're gonna cook it off at 350 degrees for about a minute and a half, two minutes. Okay, while that fish is in the oven, I don't wanna distract myself and go off and do something else because we know that fish cooks very rapidly and it's easy to forget about and overcook.
So I, my mind is on the fish. I'm thinking about what kind of sauce I'm going to use for this fish. And the sauce we're going to make for this particular dish today is called bernoisette. In French, that means browned or blackened butter. It's butter that's foamed and browned. And then uh, we hit it with some nice lemon juice. And we'll see how that goes. All right. When you're using lemon juice, this lemon right here is very hard. So we want to go ahead and roll it with the palm of our hand and break up some of the uh, membranes inside the lemon. All right. And then we want to go ahead and cut off the tips. The tip of the lemon right here, cutting it off, is going to compromise the integrity of the lemon and give me the ability to totally flatten it and get all of the juice out of the lemon when I'm ready to infuse it into my browned butter. Now my walleye is just about done. It's ready to go here. I've got a beautiful brown golden color and that's due to the buttermilk. Definitely the buttermilk's looking at that. We're working the plate in threes. We've got nice three loins of walleye right here that can go right on each side. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add some whole butter to this dish right here. And we're going to cook the whole butter until it foams. Once it's foamed, we're going to add the lemon juice to it. You're going to see it. It's going to um, give you a nice nutty smell to it. Nice, good flavor. And then we're going to garnish it with some capers, which are uh, an evergreen berry. When I do the brown butter sauce, it's critical that I don't overcook it or forget about it. Once again, I want to stay right here, watch it, make sure it's ready to go. As the butter foams and you start to see the change in color of the foam in the middle, golden brown ready to go. That gives you the nice nutty flavor, okay? We don't want a blackened flavor or a bitter flavor. We want a nice toasted nutty flavor of those milk solids which are in the butter. I'm going to go ahead and add my lemon. We see that there's a chemical reaction that happens there. Very nice, very flavorful. And then I want to go ahead and add my capers. And now I'm ready to spoon some of my sauce right over the top of my walleye. The walleye loin, going to be very flavorful and delicious. Uh, really dynamite meal. Okay. So there's our buttermilk fried walleye park with capers and bernoisette or brown butter. The other dish that we made was more uh, gluten free, health conscious, especially if you were making it with uh, vegetable oil and browning it off. Here we have it, the walleye. Two different preparations, two plates, two fish, delicious. Wow, this, uh, this looks fantastic. Um... These were very quick recipes. Yeah, Zach, these came out really great. It's and awesome. remember, this is the bernoisette. This is the butter that we cooked up until it was just starting to get brown. And then we uh, hit it with the lemon juice and uh, it should have a really good nutty flavor mm. with that lemon. Yeah. This is the one that went into the buttermilk and then it went into the flour. And there wasn't a ton of flour and it's created just this like a tiny crunch. You know, it's like a thin film of crunch, but it's not a heavy breading like when I deep fry my walleye. Now remember, the buttermilk is also very acidic. And that's going to add to the tanginess and um, really blend with the flavor of the fish, the natural flavor of the fish. All right, let's try All the right. third. Let's try our tail pieces now. Now these were just finished with a squeeze of lemon, if we recall. And they were salt and black pepper. Now the black pepper should give us a little bit of different flavor, a little more robust than the white pepper, which is in both of the other two. Yeah, again, same fish, extremely different flavor. That pepper really plays a central role in this one, doesn't it? It really does. It's very good. It really does. All three are very good and very different flavor. Very I mean, different flavors and uh, very basic, simple preparations. Yeah, there, it was quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciate your time doing Super. this. Looking forward to Zach, doing some more with it you. It was fun. All right. Bon appetit. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.